Welcome to Trial Site News YouTube channel. I'm Adrian, and today we start another episode of the Weekly Roundup. Today we'll be discussing the Ronma Mab's use in severe to critical COVID-19 patients. Then, top California gastroenterology investigator leads phase two ivermectin clinical trial targeting COVID-19 cases, followed by a COVID-19 protocol of steroids and vitamin C, and how it's dividing experts. And then we have a patent dispute. Arbutus Biopharma seeks a share of Moderna's revenues should its COVID-19 vaccine, mRNA-1273, be approved. And finally, at the end of this episode, we'll be highlighting a few of our viewers' comments from the previous episode of the Weekly Roundup. All of this starts now. Baylor University Medical Center prepares to initiate a clinical trial investigating the Ronlimab, an investigational drug for HIV infections that has been under clinical evaluation due to its apparent ability to inhibit lung inflammation associated with COVID-19, with the goal to reduce breathing problems and helps patients with severe to critical COVID-19 cases. The prominent Texas Academic Medical Center and largest not-for-profit health system in Texas was selected by drug sponsor Cytodyne to participate in an ongoing phase three clinical trial. Northern Texas research sites get busy as well in the fight against COVID-19. So what is Lorandlimab? Well, as reported here on Trial Site News, Lorandlimab, a humanized IgG4 monoclonal antibody or MAB that blocks CCR5, which is a cellular receptor important in HIV infection, tumor metastasis, and other diseases including NASH, the most severe form of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which can result in fibrosis, liver failure, and even liver cancer among other serious disease stages. Now, Luronlimab actually masks CCR5, thus protecting healthy T cells from viral infection by blocking the predominant HIV subtype from entering those cells. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has granted Saturdine fast track designation for the use of Luronlimab as a combination therapy with heart for HIV infected patients for metastatic triple negative breast cancer. The drug is now being investigated to determine if it can reduce breathing problems associated with COVID-19. So let's take a look at the study results thus far. Recently, the sponsor was satisfied with phase two results in a press release, highlighting that in the interventional arm, they had less serious adverse events than the placebo. The company will announce efficacy results as soon as statistical analysis are completed. CEO Dr. Nader Porhasan reports that we have over 1,100 patients, safety data that shows that we have hardly any serious adverse events. Now, we here at Trial Site News are noting that the phase two data is not fully released yet, so we cannot be yet sure as to the outcomes. So let's take a step back and take a look at the study itself. This is the second phase two clinical trial Cytodyne has commenced, which the other targeting a broader COVID-19 patient population, while this study involves severe to critical patient cases. The phase 2B and 3 two-arm randomized double-blind placebo-controlled adaptive design multicenter study evaluates the safety and efficacy of Lorandlimab in patients with severe or critical symptoms of respiratory illness caused by COVID-19. Patients in this study will be randomized to receive weekly doses of 700 milligrams of Lorandlimab in patients with severe or critical respiratory illness caused by SARS-CoV-2 infection. Patients are then randomized to receive the weekly doses of either Lorandlimab or placebo. Both the interventional drug and the placebo will be administered via subcutaneous injection. The study includes three phases, which include screening period, treatment period, and follow-up period. Now, this study started back in April and runs until December, with the final estimated completion date of April 1, 2021. A multi-center study with sites in nine states, including two in Texas, Baylor University Medical Center and University of Texas. The sponsor lists the sites here which the link to this article on trialsitenews.com and all of its related story links can be found in the description below.
Now, for our next story on the weekly roundup, a dynamic research organization in Ventura, California called Progenobiome LLC will initiate a phase two clinical trial investigating the efficacy of ivermectin in combination with doxycycline, much like the successful combination tested by Dr. Tarek Alam from Bangladesh Medical College. Now, it's in combination with dietary supplements, including zinc, vitamin D3, and vitamin C. The study is led by a top principal investigator in California, profiled previously by Trial Site News, Dr. Sabim Hazan. So let's take a look at the study. Officially titled a Phase II Double-Blind Randomized Placebo-Controlled Trial of Combination Therapy to Treat COVID-19 Infection. The study start date is planned for August, and their protocol calls for a two-year ongoing study, but assuming they can enroll and treat sufficient numbers of participants, they will be able to report on results sooner. They are seeking to enroll 300 participants with either intervention or placebo arm of the study. The intervention arm includes ivermectin, sulantra, stromectol, sclice, as well as the antibiotic doxycycline, zinc, vitamin D, and vitamin C. The sponsor has established four primary outcome measures, including time to negative RT-PRC, result indicating the patient is no longer infected, time to reduce symptom progression in days as measured by NEWS scoring system or National Early Warning Score, time to symptom improvement as measured by NEWS scoring system, and efficacy of treatment as measured by TITER. They also have established several secondary outcome measure targets as well. So, who is the sponsor here? Well, a genetic sequencing research laboratory, Progenobiome, dedicates their efforts to the work of the late Dr. Sidney Feingold, a pioneer in the field of anaerobic bacteria research. Now, their research is driven by passion and mission to find cures to diseases that can be identified by investigations into the gut flora influenced by the work on fecal microbiota transplant of Dr. Thomas Barodi. Now, they are involved with a range of research activity from assay development and clinical trials to companion diagnosis diagnostics, and gut refloralization to the development of COVID-19 treatment protocols. Now, as mentioned earlier, based in Ventura, California, their true mission is to crack the genetic code of a trillion bacteria fungi that lives in the human gut. Their hopes are to find cures to diseases that they suspect may be caused by alteration of the gut flora. So back to the study and its principal investigator, Dr. Sabine. Now, Sabine is a specialist in gastroenterology, internal medicine, and hepatology. She is also the founder and CEO of the Malibu Specialty Center and Venture Clinical Trials, where she conducts and oversees clinical trials of cutting-edge research on various medical issues. Dr. Hazan is a top principal investigator for multiple global pharmaceutical companies and also serves as an editor of Practical Gastroenterology on the Microbiome, a peer-reviewed journal that reaches 18,000 gastroenterologists, and she has been a speaker at the World Congress of Digestive Disease, Microbiome Congress, International Drug Discovery Science and Technology Conference, and the NIST. And so, if you reside in the Ventura, California area and meet the inclusion criteria, consider contacting the center when the study commences. The contact there is Jordan Daniels. And you can find his contact information and all the links shown in this video can all be accessed by going to trialsitenews.com. And of course, we'll be linking to this article in the description below. For our next story on the weekly roundup, a group of critical care specialists from academic institutions and major hospitals have come together to form the Frontline COVID-19 Critical Care Alliance, and they have developed the Math Plus protocol for hospital treatment of COVID-19. Now, on July 16th, Medscape took a look at this protocol. Then they noted that response to the protocol among other critical care physicians is mixed, with several physicians in interviews with Medscape Medical News urging caution because the benefits and relative risks of the combined medications have not been tested in randomized controlled trials. Now, Math Plus is an acronym for methylprednisolone, a steroid ascorbic acid, vitamin C, thiamine, and heparin. The PLUS stands for additional supplements such as vitamin D, zinc, and melatonin. Math PLUS evolved from HAT therapy, hydrocortisone, ascorbic acid, and thiamine. That was created by Paul Merrick, chief of the Division of Pulmonary and Critical Care Medicine at Eastern Virginia Medical School for critical cases of sepsis. 
Now, when Merrick and his collaborators created the protocol in March, the World Health Organization, or WHO, was advising against steroids for COVID-19 patients. But using a website and a small communications team, the Math Plus team publicized their work. Merrick indicates that his requests to evaluate the protocol to the World Health Organization, CDC, and NIH have not yet been answered. In recent Senate testimony, Pierre Corey shared his positive experience using the protocol to treat patients and expressed his dismay that national health care organizations came out against the use of corticosteroids for COVID-19 from the early days of the pandemic based on what he called a tragic error in analysis of medical data. Early on, the protocol was considered heresy for including steroids. Merrick says the deaths went down after beginning the protocol and that they have been collecting data but do not plan a randomized controlled trial. Now, some doctors have expressed concern that the evidence is not there for Math Plus and called for RCTs, but Dr. Merrick says this would not be ethical if the doctor was confident steroids would help. He says that since Math Plus is personalized for each patient, an RCT would be incredibly difficult. One critic, a director of critical care medicine at Northwell Health's North Shore University Hospital in Manhasset, New York, said that he finds it very disturbing that this is being propagated and argues that general physicians would unthinkingly apply this protocol. Others, meanwhile, in support of the protocol, have emphasized its focus on both treating different problems, example, hypoxia and blood clots, and recognizing that there are different phases of the COVID-19 disease. A medical civil war aspect of Math Plus is vitamin C, or ascorbic acid. Vitamins have two handicaps in modern medicine. They have association with New Age quackery, and they are low profit. Critics point to recent studies showing a lack of effect in treating sepsis with the vitamin. Now, in response, Merrick has argued that the vitamin was given too late in the course of disease to be effective. The Alliance has posted underlining studies supporting the underlying science of the Math Plus protocols, as shown here. And of course, we will link to this story in the description below. Meanwhile, for our next story, Moderna, the maker of mRNA-1273, one of the leading COVID-19 experimental vaccine candidates, has attracted enormous attention from investors, society, and the press, not to mention the health authorities and governments around the world. Now they have new attention, allegations of intellectual property misdoing. Arbutus Biopharma has just challenged the Cambridge, Massachusetts-based company's patents covering lipid nanoparticle technology. mRNA-1273 is a messenger RNA-based vaccine, and LMP technology represents the underlying delivery system. Now, Moderna tried to argue in front of the U.S. Patent Trial and Appeal Board that the plaintiff's claims are not worthy of patent protection, reports Investors Business Daily. The courts, however, didn't agree with Moderna and suggested that this board erred in their decision. Moderna is now on record that it may further pursue these matters. However, this legal interaction doesn't impede the full throttle phase three clinical trial. So, Moderna submitted a written statement declaring that Moderna is not aware of any significant intellectual property impotence for any products that we intend to commercialize, including mRNA-1273. However, enough investors appeared spooked by the recent events that their stock price dropped by 9.5%, trading at 75.33 after the day's close. Meanwhile, the small cap Arbutus rose 119.9% to 6.29. And finally, we've reached the part of the show where we highlight a few of the comments received in the last week's episode. Now, as always, we read all the comments, though we cannot reply to them all. Now, Deborah Van Dusen says, if I'm not mistaken, that is the medicine that I use to worm my horses. Indeed, Deborah, ivermectin is also used to treat animals as well. Now, Marcio requests that we please put the link of the study in the description. Thank you for your feedback, Marcio. All original story links from trialsitenews.com in the description contain the links you are looking for. Bo K says, great work, guys. No political BS. You guys must be Canadians. Well, believe it or not, I'm not Canadian, nor is any of the team that works for Trial Site News. Ruby R says, sad face. Nobody's talking about this drug. 
It's been months. Well, Ruby, we are. And there are some exciting news stories on ivermectin that we will be sharing with you all soon. So stay tuned. And that, my friends, brings this episode to a close. As always, we appreciate each and every one of you in our audience. Thank you so much for being with us here today. From Trial Site News, I'm Adrian, and this is the Weekly Roundup.